if you can stand the heat, stay away from the fire. Happy Black Friday! Oh man, we got a badass game for you tonight. Gifford and we are looking for some fireworks tonight. The Miami Dolphins and the Oakland Raiders, every time they get together, something seems to happen that's usually very exciting. Let's take a look at the standings in the Eastern Division of the AFC where the Dolphins operate. The Dolphins need a win tonight to stay ahead of the New England Patriots and they have a long road ahead of them this season. But they feel they've got it all together once again. Larry Zonka, a big plus for them. For the Oakland Raiders, well, they struggled. They beat the Rams in the opening game of the season, and then uncharacteristically of the Oakland Raiders, they dropped three in a row. They came back strong against the Denver Broncos, however, last week, 27-3, and a victory over the Broncos. And they feel they still have a shot in their AFC Western Division right now. Kansas City, Denver, San Diego on top, but... Oakland feels they can get back into the hunt once again. Uh, speaking to those on top, he's always on top of just about everything there is to get on top of, and that's now, Don Meredith. Take it yeah, away, my man. I'm, off. I'm close, right? I'm really excited about this ball game. I won't tell you why. In the 10 years of Monday Night Football, these two teams are going to play tonight are the winningest teams that we've ever had on Monday Night Football. The Dolphins have been there 15 times. They've won 12, only lost three times. But the Raiders are the number one winner on Monday Night Football. They've been there 13 times, won 11, lost one. They, didn't, they lost the opening game back in 1974 to the Buffalo Bills. Now then, the thing I like is we got some action. See, Greasy is going to be he's healthy again. We had Don Strock that was coming in there. Don Strock did a good job. He filled in. But Greasy's back in the, in the saddle tonight, as Frank mentioned. He's had a pulled hamstring. Now Strock's a little bit hurt. Greasy's had good backups. Earl Marl, Strock. But if Strock can't go tonight, a hometown favorite from Stanford. Old Guy Benjamin's here, and he can throw that football. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And Frank, where is Howard? Oh, Howard. We're going to miss the coach tonight. We really will. He's in Baltimore, of course, for the telecast of the World Series, which will begin in Baltimore tomorrow night. Of course, primetime telecast on Tuesday, Wednesday night again on Friday, and the best of four of the World Series, seven. And, of course, what you really basically have, uh, I know Howard would not approve, is three jocks in the booth because Fran Tarkenton is with us. Fran, of course, was up in Minnesota yesterday where they retired his number 10, and justly so. He's headed for the Hall of Fame, no question. But he was in Oakland today, and he had a chance to visit with Larry Zonka. And here's Fran's report on the Zonk. The Dolphins, of course, last week were stunned by the Jets 27-33. They need a win tonight to stay abreast of the New England Patriots. 
What's up, Raider Nation? Happy Black Friday! If you are just joining us, this is another edition of Raider Reaction. Black Friday, Silver and Black Theater, where we dust off another classic from the Raider archives. Tonight, it's Monday Night Football. Classic style. A week before the season October began, 8th, 1979. For contract, he finally resolved that. Casper is in the lineup. But the man who plays also for the Oakland Raiders with a tight end position is Raymond Chester. You'll see a lot of him tonight because he's tied for the lead in receptions after five games in the entire NFL. Ira Matthews, Matthews has dropped deep for the Oakland Raiders. Well, you got Bob Greasy, you got Kenny Stabler dueling it out on a freaking Black Friday. Classic Monday Night Football action. What more do you want? Kick back, get your adult beverage, get your herbal refreshment. Let's get after it. And Brunson breaks the tackle at the 27 yard line, moves out of bounds, up close to the 38 yard line. Gary Brunson, who was acquired from Kansas City a year ago, just to do what you saw right there. Look at it, Don. All right. That's his way I like to stop him up, man. He's got it going. Good kick. Let's see what happens. Francis, what what's up, there, there? What's caught, up, Leslie? What's up, everybody? Up Thanks for joining us as always. Appreciate any second you spent this here Raider Reaction. Even while Facebook right is still currently Casper's fucking with our post reach, first down. we are in communication with him. We're trying to get that shit fixed. The two tied in offense. Casper's in there, as is Raymond Chester, but this is Mark Van Egan. Piled up at the middle as he moves over the 41 yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Let's meet the offense. Of course, Kenny Stabler is the quarterback number 12. Mark Van Egan looking for another 1,000 yard season. Wide receivers, well, Cliff Branch can really pour it on. But we are going to see, I think, a lot of two tight ends tonight. That will be Raymond Chester and Dave Casper. They were very effective against the Denver Broncos last week. Not a too bad two tight end set there. Line. Second down and seven. Beautiful night for football here in Oakland. Temperature just What's up, up, Raymond? Stabler back and looking. Fires, and this is Raymond Chester, his 26th reception of the season. He has a first down. He's in Miami territory inside the 49-yard line. Hit there by Kim Bocamper. And let's meet that defensive unit for the Miami Dolphins. And like the Oakland Raiders, they'll move in and out of a 3-4 to a 4-3. The front three, Bo Camper in the middle, the nose guard, 73, flanked by Vern Denherter, 83, and Doug Betters. And there they are. The linebackers, well, Kim Bocamper is a one tough dude. He will get into a down position, defensive end, when Miami wants to go to a 4-3. Secondary, Gerald Small. Second year man out of San Jose State at the right corner is having a tremendous year. And this is Mark, or rather Derek Jensen, on the first and ten, and he gets to the 45-yard line. I think an interesting thing to watch here, uh, Frank and Don starting out, is Stabler's protection. We know that if Stabler gets a lot of protection, which he's used to, he's very dangerous. Uh, the Dolphins have not rushed the passer well this year. They've only got five sa five sacks. If they're going to have any chance against Stabler defensively, they've got to put some heat on him. That is an interesting stat. Only five sacks by the Dolphins, and nevertheless, they have ten interceptions back in that backfield. They're quick back there. Foley is small. On second down and seven, Stabler to the air. Flag is down. Oh, yeah. Raymond Chester has the ball. And he gets to the 32-yard line, corralled there by Larry Gordon. But again, a flag is put down, and it usually is an area where they're going to get a holding call, and that's the story. He got plenty of time to throw. That might have been one of the reasons. <laughs> I have no Some idea, Dare Dare. That's a good question, my man. They Jordan can't hold us down. We'll We're here every freaking calls. night doing our thing, whether they help us get out we'll or not. We get out on our own. Against Oakland. Holding number 78, offense, still second down. Archell, who was just activated today. If you play Madden, for the Open Raiders, you play on PS4, you think you're a gamer, you've way. got just over 24 hours to get your spot secured in the Raider Reaction 2020 Offseason Madden Challenge. RaiderNationStore.net has joined Raider Reaction this season to help us sponsor the Madden Challenge and kick in a ton of prizes. There are prize packs for every division winner. We're even going to do one loser prize pack. So all the... 
owners that don't win their division, we're going to put all those guys in one drawing and one of them will win a prize pack as well. The same as the division winners will get. Our grand prize is going to be a... We're going to add to it every single week. Last year, we gave away two autographed Derek Carr jerseys. This season, we are starting the grand prize off with an autographed certificate of authenticity Josh Jacobs jersey. And every single week, we're going to add something else to the grand prize. So it's just going to be a big pile of silver black awesome is started off with the Josh Jacobs autograph jersey first. It's only a $30 buy-in. The league is over half full right now, and we are running with it. So if you are interested, message the Raider Reaction page, message us on Instagram, message us on Twitter. Whatever you got to do, get in at midnight Saturday. We are locking it down. Sunday night, we have our official rules show and uh, we're going to announce what everybody's team we're doing a full fantasy draft style and that will happen the next sunday and the league will kick off immediately after you only have to commit to one game a week contact us now you only have till midnight tomorrow night deep is tony nathan a rookie third round draft pick out of alabama there he is fifth in the afc with a 10.6 average and ray guy will boom it if you are just joining us, this is Monday Night Football from the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, October 8th, 1979. You got Kenny Stabler and Bob Greasy under center dueling it out on a Black Friday. The Miami Dolphins, 4-1 on this young NFL season. Move up to the line of scrimmage, directed by Bob Greasy. Their first possession, the ball at the 21-yard line. Now he's off, he's in there, as one set back 39, along with Dell Williams, number 24. And this is Dell Williams, former San Francisco 49er, who moves briskly out of the 25 to the 26. Again, at five, it'll be second and five. And let's take a look at this offensive unit for the Dolphins. I told you about Dell Williams and Larry Zaka. He's the short yardage man. Nat Moore, in just six years, has become the Dolphins' all-time leading receiver. Jimmy Cephalo, a second-year man out of Penn State, the other wide receiver. He's in there because Duriel Harris... As a Follow us on Instagram. Right. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Raider Reaction Webcast. And of course, like, follow us, share us here on Facebook. Big opening like a Mack truck. He roared through it for a first down. Out to the 35, the 36, first down Miami. Let's take a look at him again. All right, here's Big Zaka. Some people don't think this uh, Oakland defensive line is big enough to handle a man the size of Zaka. But he weighs 235, 240, and that's tough for that free safety to have to make that tackle, although Mr. Tatum is very capable of doing it, although he didn't take him on head on, did he? No, he's getting smarter. <laughs> and he had Newman had a half a block, number 64. He moved him out of there in pretty good shape. And at the center, Jim Langer, first down for the Zonk. Ball just over the 35-yard line. Matt Moore is in motion. Zonk gets the call again, left side, just shakes off one open Raider and pounds out. <laughs> to the 40-yard line, a gain of four. It'll be second and six defensively for the Oakland Raiders, and they will change tonight. They open with a 3-4. That's what you're looking at at the moment. Dave Pear, they got him from Tampa a year ago. He's been something. There is your linebacking core. The man that will come out will be Monty Johnson when they go to a 4-3. And defensively, a secondary that is troubled. Monty Jackson, an all-pro with the Rams. Acquired last year, defensive right cornerback is out of there with a bad knee, and Henry Williams, a rookie from San Diego State, is in there. Could be vulnerable. Second down and six, Miami. Quick toss, Dell Williams. He's following Larry Little. And Williams goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be third down and two. Mike Davis over there defensively for Oakland. Dell Williams, he was a bad acquisition. Uh, Fran, would you say? I think they did all right. I know Delvin is really pleased to be where he is. He... Uh, it said, you know, I could have had a good year last year behind this offensive line. Everybody keeps talking about this offensive line. I think there's some good reasons for it. And, of course, he was involved in the San Francisco trade that got O.J. Simpson there. And Delvin said, you know, I know if O.J. had been down here in Miami, I, he could have gotten over that 1,000 yards, too. And I might have had a separated shoulder like O.J. had. They gave a first and a fifth to San Francisco for Dell Williams. Greasy now looking over a long third and two as they mark the ball at the 43. And oh, Gracie boy. gets loose from one defender. A flag is down, however. It was Ted Hendricks on the blitz. But a flag is down, downfield. And it could have some kind of interference. And Gracie almost is, too. Man, did he take a shot. 
Reggie Kenlaw, I believe it was, came up and hit him. He fogged up his glasses there, I think, didn't it? Mm. That's a tough shot. Kenlaw is, of course, the man who comes in when Oakland wants to go to their 4-3 defense, and we're going to get the holding call. It goes against Oakland, as you see indicated. Again, the call. We'll hear the offender. Defense. First stop. I think he said 37, didn't he? I didn't hear it. I think he said 57, which would have been John Huddleston if he did. You know, Don, I already think that Greasy's his best when he's got that good running game going for him. And, and this year, they haven't run the ball as good as Miami Dolphin teams have in the past. Some people think it's because they're getting a little age on the right side. Jim Garner, he's a devoted Oakland Raider fan. Jimmy Buffett also dropped by the booth. They've got some celebrity fans. Another flag is down. Greasy wants a bundle. He's got him. He's got him. Oh, boy. Going deep intended down there for Duriel Harris. And he did not look as though on that sprint that the muscle pull that has been bothering him was bothering men. Lester Hayes was down there defensively for the Oakland Raiders. The judge. And he took quite a fall. But again, a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion. It goes against the Miami Dolphins. Well, they're having a little trouble getting it settled down here so far. It'll all work. Phil Villapiano, the acting defensive captain, number 41. Illegal motion, number 84, offense, decline, second down. Tied in, Bruce Hardy. Illegal motion for the Miami Dolphins. It'll be second down and 10. The penalty declined by Oakland. Five men, secondary now for the Oakland Raiders. Rufus Bess, a free agent out of South Carolina State, comes in there defensively for Oakland. Bob Greasy, 53.5% thus far this year. Missed a lot of the Minnesota game. Strock came in, won that when he missed all of the Bear game and came back last week against the Jets. Second and 10. Ball at the 48-yard line. Whoa. Tracy did not Whoa. get it off, and I believe there was no motion. He gets back on the football. Rod Martin. On the blitz, Man, the game. names they just the keep. We got Rod Martin, Phil Villapiano, freaking got Jack Tatum. <laughs> I mean, the names in this game are just that of Raider lore. Art Shell. The ball slipped out, and that ball has a glaze on it as you start the game. And watch him; he'll go through with his motion, and the ball just slips out. But he, he had a little help too. Yeah, he had a little help from his friend over there. <laughs> Those things make it slip out in a hurry. But is that, yeah, would that be considered a fumble? I mean, is that what they're saying? That was a fumble? Of course it was. They recovered the ball back down there. They'll mark it at the 42-yard line. Third down, 17, Don Shula. Coach of the Dolphins looking on. Out of the 4-3, here come the Raiders. Kume got knocked off. And hey, he's going down again. But they were all there. Fucking getting after that quarterback. Was in on the tackle for Oakland, and the loss is all the way back to the 32-yard line. If you're just joining us, Raider Nation, thank you, you first right off. I am the commish. This is another edition of Raider Reaction Black Friday. Silver and Black Theater taking you back to Oakland Alameda Coliseum. October 8, 1979, Monday Night Football. Set down back there. There's Aaron Matthews, a rookie out of Wisconsin who led the nation last year in country turns. George Roberts, punning. Every punning Friday at Raider Reaction is Black ball, Friday. Make sure you like, follow the page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Raider Reaction Webcast. Not to miss any of the silver and black awesomeness that's coming from the Raider Reaction hype team. We'll be back in a moment. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia took a The Madden to League kicks off this Sunday. You've got until midnight Saturday to message the page to get your spot. Don't dick around, man. We've got killer sponsors on. Uh, they just sent me some more prizes this week. We've got Game Worn Jersey cards, two Game Worn Jersey rookie Josh Jacobs cards, two Game Worn Jersey Hunter Renfro cards to throw in for prizes to give away as well in this Madden League. 
Man, I'm telling you, the prizes we got picked out that we haven't even shown you are insane. The prizes we have shown you are insane. Autographed Josh Jacobs jersey. Last year we gave away two autographed Derek Carr jerseys with certificate of authenticity. $30 binds, all you got to get in, man. And we play one game a week is all you have to commit to. Super Bowls in about June. If you got game or think you got game, put your money where your mouth is. Even if you suck and go own 16, we got a loser's bracket where we're going to do a raffle and and he can five. Everybody who doesn't five. win a prize pack is going to have a chance to win a prize pack in this league, even Stabler. if you suck. But catchable, wouldn't you say? Very tough catchable. Very tough catchable. One of the Raiderettes. Checking Staber out. He's one of four for 11 yards. Third and five. Stabler hangs it up for Chester oh. again, and he almost got it. The deflection there by Foley. I don't know whether he got a hand on it, but Raymond Chester almost came up with it. That'll bring up fourth down, and we'll see Ray Guy once again. And Stabler going back again in the pocket. He's got a double tight end there. He, he's throwing to Chester, coming to the middle. Really kind of a dangerous pass. That's his what? Fourth? That's his fourth attempt at Chester. I think they hit the first one, didn't they? And then as he's had the second, fourth. They must have seen something back in that second here they think they can work on. The one thing I think they're sure of, Don, they're not going to beat Miami with the run. They're going to have to beat them throwing the football, and that's uh, why it's so important that they protect their passer, which so far they have, but they haven't completed the many passes yet. Sylvester, the center for the Oakland Raiders, did not like the condition of the football. It perhaps had a little stick on it that some of the players use on their hands to make... I think more psychology than anything else, but the ball has changed and ready now for Ray Guy. And I like to watch him bunt when he can kick away, which he can do. Tony Nathan, a respecting Ray Guy, is way back at his own 15-yard line. Huh. He pounds it. The flag is down as Tony Nathan tries to find a picket line on the right side. He does not. Gets back to the 22, 23-yard line on Ray Guy's 43-yard punt. But again, a flag is down. Which could indicate that an illegal man was downfield. No, I think it's going to be against the Dolphins, Frank. Uh, the, the holding against Miami. He took the holding. And we'll bring it back. Is that an automatic first automatic down? Automatic first. There you go. Oh, get this thing geared up again. And we'll try and pick up the call to find out which of the Dolphins cost Miami a possession. Holding number 41, defense before the kick, first down. Cornerback Norris Thomas was holding before the kick, automatic first, the ball just short of the 45-yard line for the Oakland Raiders. Still no score, 8-28, remaining in the first quarter. You know, so many times after a penalty like this and everything's been kind of slow, things pick up in a hurry. I think that's wistful thinking. Let's hope it happens. <laughs> Let's get it. Too tight in offense. And <laughs> Raymond Chester it picks up. Move the flag falls and Staber falls back at the 33 yard line. Larry Gordon in there. A lot of blitzing. You see Hendricks there, 83. Gordon was there, number 50. Shula paid Gordon one of the highest compliments I've ever heard. He had intercepted three passes in the game last year. He said, Never had he ever seen a, a linebacker have a better game. And he is a good one. They've got those guys that are both big and they're fast I think it's no secret that uh, you want to try to put some pressure on illegal motion number 88 offense decline second down and of course Sabre did not get that ball off so they declined the penalty the ball has moved back to the 33 yard line we'd like to apologize for some technical problems we're having having here in Oakland you're not really getting the coverage that we offer you on Monday nights we're having our troubles so bear with us we'll try and get it all pulled together. Our slow mo is in operational at the moment, and you're not seeing the close up pictures you usually see that accompany our telecast. Second down, 22, Stabler. Van Egan. And they'll mark it at the 39 yard line. He gets some of it back, but it'll be third down at about 16. It really wasn't a typical Stabler type pass there. Uh, he had Van Egan wide open and he made him go down to the ground to get the ball. If he'd have got it to him in a little better shape, he had a chance to run with it. So Miami
Miami and just defensively, like all the teams now in pro football, every situation in the game calls for a special unit. Third and 16. Rich Martini comes in. Over the middle and is complete to Jensen and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. That's it. It'll be fourth down. Hit there hard by Larry Gordon. Tim Foley up quickly to help for Miami. Says I'll check it all later. There's Tony Nathan. He is back at his 10-yard line. This rookie from Alabama. Got a 10.6 average for Miami thus far this year. And here's Ray Guy. They're coming after him. Morris Thomas just missed it for Miami. Nathan calls for it. Makes the fair catch at the 25-yard line. 30-yard putt there by Ray Guy. And Miami will have the football with 6.50 remaining in the first quarter. No score from Oakland when we return. For Pittsburgh tomorrow night are looking in tonight. Miami with a first and 10. Ball at the 25-yard line. Dell Williams gets the handoff. He runs into a crowd on the right side. Squeezes out perhaps a yard, giving the yard and a half. It'll be second down at eight. Maybe they're waiting on something to happen. <laughs> that might be it. Well, they can join the three of us. Yeah. Second and eight. Ariel Harris, 82, is in there, along with Nat Moore, 89. Wide receivers for Bob Greasy. Draw play, Zonka. And he's corralled there by Monty Johnson. Short of the line of scrimmage. There'll be a yard loss. It'll be third down and nine. I'll tell you, Monty Johnson is 6'5", a 240-pounder. He hit Zonka. That would have flattened a smaller man. Larry doesn't move fast. Never did, really. Frank is certainly strong. Frank, there's an interesting thing about both of these defenses. They're basically three-man line defenses, but again, on passing situations, they're going with four down linemen to get a better pass rush. There's Dave Casper. Fourth lineman you're talking about, uh, for Oakland anyway, is Pat Tumay. They call him the designated pass rusher. He was cut by Oakland earlier, came back, they renegotiated the contract, he's back here, and he's basically comes in on that situation you're talking about, Frank. And Bob Greasy did not like what was setting up for him in the Miami Dolphin huddle. He calls timeout, moves over for a chat with Don Shula. And we'll be in Dallas Saturday night, of course, for a special Sunday night telecast the next night between the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Rams. And if you've ever been to an Oklahoma-Texas game in Dallas, you know enough to stay off the streets on Saturday night. Third and nine. Bob Greasy did not like something that was set up for the Dolphins. He called timeout. Ball just at the 25-yard line. Norm Bulash is in there, as is Gary Davis, and Gary Davis gets the call. You've got to do something really That's weird is going on hey. right here. Uh, sweep on a third and nine, a loss of a couple. Bill Villapiano was there defensively, along with Money Johnson. Fourth down, Miami. That's why he called the timeout. He wanted to go over the sideline and get that play on third and ten to call a sweep. That's right. You forget huh? that every now and then on third yeah, and ten. That's right. That's that's good. All right. George now, Roberts comes out. That went off the side of his foot a while ago. He's a left-footed kicker, but he has a full hamstring on the right side. Ira Matthews. A rookie six-round draft pick from Wisconsin is standing at his 40-yard line. This Good time, Roberts ball. bombs one. Matthews driven back to his 32-yard line, bobbles the ball, and quickly falls on it. And Miami was hustling down there. It was Don Besselu. Dinkelhoff never got hurt. He was always there. He played every game for 17 years and played it well. <laughs> I think it might affect these guys a little bit. See, that's a new position. Shell's coming back in. He's been hurt. On the first and ten, Jensen gets the call on the left side. Jensen out of the 35, close to the 36. It'll be second down and six. Derek Jensen, uh, actually a first-year man, came up a year ago, but was on the injured reserve. Had a great career at Texas, at Arlington, over 3,000 yards there in rushing. Frank, there's no question Al Davis is concerned about his running backs. There have been a lot of rumors out here the, the past couple of days that he's out looking for a running back, and he's using Dave Casper as the bait. And uh, they've got running back problems, but I think that's pretty heavy bait to put out. Tony Rubisky is out of there. Art Whittington started for them last year, is on the injured reserve. Second down. There we go. With Van Egan, he has the first down, lunges forward close to the 45-yard line, and he picks up the first down for Oakland. Rusty Chambers there defensively, 51 along with Steve Toll, 56 for Miami. 
345 remaining in the first quarter. Talk about Al and his attitude towards running backs. He picked up Todd Christensen. He was an ex-Dallas Cowboy player and actually I think was with the Giants for a while, wasn't he? He came back in. He likened him to Van Egan. He says, I like Christensen because he's a good receiver, might be able to play tight end, but I think he's feeling those backs that's going to be around for a while. And he had a good game against Oakland in the Hall of Fame game. So they have him as a backup. On first and ten, Stabler going out to Chester. Right. Raymond Thomas Chester. Thomas is there defensively, but Raymond Chester, who goes 6'4", 235, carries Norris. Thomas close to a first down. He might be about a foot short. All right, a little play action fake you see there. Little fake Mark Egan. Uh, Mark Egan. And Egan is up there trying to block, pick up somebody. This is really kind of an unusual offensive set. I'm not really sure what all they're trying to do there. I never did run it myself, so I guess they, when they've got receivers like Chester and, and Casper, they're unusual types of tight ends because they have speed. You know, usually you run the two tight ends for, for uh, have them in there for running purposes, yeah. but really they got them in there to throw to them. The whole team has two tight ends like these two. Chester and Casper. This is Van Egan. Van Egan crawled over to the right side. Put there by Baumauer. Van Egan would... through the 41-yard line. There's Larry Little, 13-year veteran, been at that right guard spot. All pro six times. One of the truly great guards in the National Football League the last several years. Came up of late 60s with San Diego. Played a couple of years there. Been all pro ever since he moved on to Miami. First and ten. Branches out to the left. Oakland stays with Chester and Casper. They're two tight ends. Uh oh. oh. Gordon. Stabler. What a play. Jensen. Oh. They're going to say no. They're going to say that he was in the arms of Larry Gordon. That's that new rule, and it's going to continue to cause a lot of problems. Anytime a defender has a quarterback uh, in trouble, I guess, so to speak, well, they're going to mark it right there. Fred, what do you think about the new rule? Do you think. Uh, I like it. Well, I'd really do, too. And I think just because it's here, uh, that's why the crowd reacted to it. But this is where a lot of quarterbacks get hurt, just sure. in these situations right there where they're still struggling trying to get away. They call it whenever he has the grasp and control, and he really had him uh, yeah. in pretty good shape there. I've seen both of you guys in the grasp and control throw touchdown passes. Now, how do you explain that? Well, anyway, you wouldn't like I, it as a player. I had torn cartilages and broken ribs and noses, <laughs> too, so I'll swap a couple of those for a TV, maybe. Second down, about 17. He's got him. Chester. And Chester gets the first down. Falls inside the 30. Defensively, for Miami, it was Neil Colsey who was traded from Oakland to Miami during the offseason, and Colsey slipped, or he might have prevented the first down. Now, this... Turf here is, looks like it's in great shape, but it was just resodded at the end of baseball season, so you know it's a little bit loose, and we've seen several slips already tonight. Plenty, pro plenty of protection here, Don. He's wide open there. You did see Colsby, Colsby uh, slip and get up. This has also been watered a lot, Frank, so the footing I don't think is going to be very solid anywhere on that field. Stabler now, five straight after opening one for four. First and ten, ball inside the 30, Van Egan. Tries to look for daylight to the outside. Finds a little bit. Down he goes. Bob Baumauer was there along with Steve Toll. You give him a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. Look at that. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I, I think it's primarily, though, uh, is that the end of the first quarter? That's what the heck is that? Son of a gun. Well, as we've heard before, we'll get back to that. That is the end of the first quarter. There is no score. That's Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith, Fran Tarkenton. That's not Fran. No, nope, he's up here with us. That's Watching tough. the Oakland Raiders and the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have never won here at Oakland Alameda County Stadium. They've lost six straight. Kenny Stabler looking over a second down and eight. Uh-oh. He moved out of there. Ducks won. Pass pressure and incomplete. Dave Casper could not hold on to the low ball at the 14-yard line. It'll be third and eight. All right, Kenny, get him revved up here. Cliff Branch, flip to the right. Open stays in the two tight ends. Third down eight. Stabler in desperate trouble. Down he goes. Bob Baumauer in there. Man, this has been a defensive Stabler matchup thus far. Way back and a good threaten the field goal potential of the Open Raiders as they sack Kenny Stabler back at the 38-yard line. And out comes Ray Guy. I, I'm sure they're playing the kind of offense they think they are 
best equipped to play. But what we saw right there, a good example of how that two tight end situation doesn't allow that much flexibility or variation down in the secondary for patterns you run. They were trying to run a cross pattern with the two tight ends, Casper and Chester, and get branched deep, and it just took too long for the thing to develop, and Kenny couldn't get it out there. That's, That's a good point. point. And it can make the blitz very effective. Great guy will punt from midfield. Looking for the corner. <laughs> he pounds it. And the rule is into the end zone, touchback, and Miami will have possession at the 20 yard line. All right, last time Greasy came up, he ran the ball three straight times. Dandy, I wonder if you'll try to put it up here. Well, I don't know. He's still nursing that full hamstring. And he said the major difficulties he can't get back, can't drop real quick. So let's see what he does. Single setback, Zonka gets the call, right side. Good block by Little and Zonka sprawls forward out over the 25 to the 26. Now, Lester Hayes had to stop him, but you saw the agility there of Larry Little. Pulled around his tackle, Mike Curran, got the block. Zonka was able to pick up seven yards. I saw more agility from Little than I did Zonka. Let's, let's see if we can check <laughs> it again. Just to pull off, you see a really good block. Gosh, say, who was that? That's Larry Little. That, well, now I'm talking about Delva. That's Little on the outside out there on Hendricks. Mike Here comes Curran. up, just stumbling along in there. On the inside block was Mike Curran. All right, that's the one. Mike Curran had a good block. Second long three, the ball at the 26. Zonka gets the quick toss, and not a good play for Larry Zonka. Now, defensively, it was number 73, Dave Browning, who beat the block for Zonka. He's not the kind of running back that I think you like to go with the quick toss with. Uh, strange. They went down to their four-down four down lineman that time, and Oakland really has been a predominant three-down lineman. They are coming back into that set right now, you see. You know, I think this is one of the biggest changes I've seen, Fran. They've got specialty people for everything. It's now down into downs and distances. They send guys in that do that. You change up all the time. You're absolutely right. Oakland here has got five defensive backs in the game. And then four-man down linemen. Third right. down eight. And Miami has three wide receivers in the game. Situation football. Greasy in a crowd. He fires and is complete to Bruce Hardy, the tight end. He has a first down at the 37-yard line. And Bob Greasy, very cool because he had a crowd around him. That was a good catch by Hardy. That's also their fourth team quarterback. When uh, Benjamin was on reserve, Hardy was the guy that took some snaps and actually played a little quarterback in there. I think that's the dream of most tight ends that I've run into. Franny was got pretty good protection that time, and Hardy stretched out. No, that ball was thrown in there, but he made it look harder than it was. It was right in there, wasn't it? I asked Bob about Bruce Hardy. He likes him. He thinks he's an excellent receiver. He was drafted ninth in 1978 out of Arizona State. First and 10, the ball at the 37-yard line. Matt Moore, split to the right. Screen to the wide receiver, and Matt Moore all breaks the tackle, and he almost busts him loose, but Dave Browning tripped him up. He still is close to a first down at the 47-yard line. Ball at the 47-yard line, no score, 11.45 remaining in the first half. What's up, Raider Nation? If you're just joining us, this is another edition of Raider Reaction Black Friday as we open the Silver and Black Theater and dust off another classic. Tonight, we're taking it back all the way to 1979, Oakland Alameda Cali Coliseum, October 8th, 1979 to be exact. It'll be a loss of three yards. Raider defender in there. Number 53, Rod Martin. Rod Martin, who has really, really come along. Came up three years ago, a 12th round draft pick. The Raiders cut him. He went over to San Francisco, tried to get a job over there. They cut him. Raiders got in trouble. They brought if him. If you are interested in joining our 2020 Raider Reaction Offseason Madden Challenge PS4 League, Beautiful night. entries, Here in Oakland, chance to secure your spot closes tomorrow Columbia, night at midnight. We have RaiderNationStore.net as well as Raider Reaction on board as 13. sponsors. Ton of prizes, Denver prize Rich. packs for division Oakland winners, Oakland huge Oakland. grand prize, Bob silver and black Oakland. mountain of awesomeness, Oakland. starting with an autographed Josh Jacobs jersey for our winner. Plus a loser prize pack. All the losers get thrown in the raffle and we'll draw one winner. So even if you completely suck, you got a chance to win. If you're interested in getting in, message the page. Message us on Instagram. Message us on Twitter. Whatever you got to do. But do it by midnight tomorrow night to get your spot locked in or it's going to be too late. Sunday night. 
7 a.m. 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. We will have our live show. We'll be uh, letting all the owners know which teams they got as we prepare for our fantasy draft the following week as we'll all be drafting our teams for the Madden League. And then it kicks off. So don't miss out. This is going to be going the entire offseason. We must have had third and, what, 30? Uh, third and a little over 20. George Roberts punting for Miami. Ira Matthews. A rookie We're going to be broadcasting some of the games, keeping you up to date on uh, what's going on in the league, on our morning shows and our Raider Reaction webcasts. Roberts puts it up high. Fair catch called for by Matthews very wisely at the 14-yard line because my, the Miami defenders were all down there. We'll be back in a moment. And by the way, at halftime, Howard Cosell is in Baltimore for our telecast tomorrow night. Had a chance to visit today earlier with the two starting pitches tomorrow for Pittsburgh is Bruce Keeson. Mike Flanagan goes for Baltimore. You'll see that at halftime along with highlights from yesterday's play around the league. First and ten in a rather strange football game for the Oakland Raiders. And their own 15, handoff is Derek Jensen, and Jensen piled drives out over the 20-yard line, close to the 22, and... Pretty good pick up there, giving seven. It'll be second down and three. Larry Gordon on the stop, and Fran and Don uh, is a little different. You keep feeling that one of these teams is going to break something. Well, you do. You kind of think that they'll get a couple of first downs, one team or the other, and you think the little momentum's going to go. There's Lester Hayes talking to Jack Tatum and finding what it's all about. But no team is really... Oh, yeah, you shit. got the Nobody judge, the assassin. This thing there are so many rated rates in this game tonight. Oakland stays with the two tight ends. Stabler hands off to Mark Van Egan. He's piled up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe eked out a yard. It'll be third and short. You know, Frank, this is really not Al Davis football. He loves to throw the ball down the field with two outside guys who can fly like a branch and a Blitnikoff who couldn't fly, but it was awfully good. And to play with two tight ends has got a great on Al Davis. I miss old Freddie. You know, he was like, when you oh. were talking about that receiver they go to, it seemed like that was the one I've seen Stabler complete a thousand passes to in years gone by. Somehow he'd work himself open. Booker Russell comes in, number 34, a second-year man out of southwest Texas. He's in there with Mark Van Egan on short yardage. Ball goes right. to Van Egan. Right. And bobbled the ball. I think Oakland got it. And if they come up with it, first down Oakland. Inside eight minutes remaining in the first half, Blit Branch drops into the huddle. Says nice. hello to Kenny. Don, that's a pretty good bonus there now. They're not a great running team, but he's able to get a first down running and then have to put the ball up. And uh, you, you got to get a little running to be able to settle things down so you can throw it. On first down. There comes Gordon. Stabler under pressure just unloads one in the general direction of Cliff Brandt, who was racing along the sidelines with Miami defender Norris Thomas. And Larry Gordon is almost as big as DP. Overhead look, downtown Oakland. Second down, oh. 10. Stabler left the football, fell on it. The loss is back to the 24-yard line, a loss of three. It'll be third down and 12. I'll bet you it had something to do with Dobby not being in there and not knocking Sylvester. It's just you get used to taking a snap. That's right. what I was going to talk about. And if, if you, you get in rhythm, there's so many things we do by habit. And they look out of rhythm. Another interesting point, uh, Frank and Don. Miami coming to this game and only sacked their opposing quarterback five times. Tonight they've already had three sacks. They're under two quarters. They're improving, aren't they? They're improving. Our Oakland's getting <laughs> fade. And they've been close on several other occasions. Third down, 13. Van Egan on the screen. Cuts back to the inside. Up to the 34, short of the first down. And Oakland will have to turn it over again. Tim Foley up there quickly to trip up Van Egan. And so it's almost like a, de a design run. They get that ball out to him on the outside. Ray Guy came into tonight with a just under a 45-yard average, second in the AFC in putting. He's usually second or first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest Tony roar. Nathan, all the way back to a seven-yard line. What a punt, oh, man. Uh -huh. Oh, Nathan nailed at the 13. Round. That's the best punt in the goddamn history of the league right there. Man, there. Perhaps the most exciting moment Hall of the ball game. 59-yard punt, Ray Guy, and we'll be back with 6.05 remaining in the first half and no score. Well, Alameda County Stadium is sold out tonight, over 54,000, but that's nothing new. They have been sold out for many, many years for a very exciting football team. 
Miami has a first and ten. The ball at their own 12-yard line following a 59-yard punt by Ray Guy. The quick toss, Dell Williams. Good block by Zonk. He took two men out, and Williams moves out to the 17-yard line, a gain of about six. They'll give him five. It'll be second down and five, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow all our friends all along the line let you know who's bringing you this telecast. KETV Channel 7, Omaha. <laughs> Omaha. Williams got five. It'll be second <laughs> down and five. Seesaw battle back and forth. Well, all righty then. Antagonists. Over the years, they have battled fairly close to even. Oakland with the edge, but Miami has never won here at Oakland. No score. 5.25 remaining in the first half. And off Dell Williams. That was a ball, but he was down. A gain of a cup. It'll be third down and four. And here comes the defensive specialty unit for the Dolphins. Get up. It's going to be tough. Third and four, and the specialty unit for the Dolphins. That's Gary Davis and Norm Bulash. They consider them a little better receivers, better receivers than Bill Williams and Zonka. Here again, you have to go to the two backs for the tight end. Greasy. Oh, down he goes, and it was Reggie Kinlaw this time. He comes in on the 4-3 for Oakland. He was all over Greasy. Fourth sack of the night for Bob. Uh, down at the 10-yard line, and the Dolphins have lost 33 yards on these sacks. And Oakland should have good field position as the cutting unit comes on for Miami. Dan, you defer to your point you made a while ago all the different defenses they're putting up, putting up in situations. They had six defensive backs in that time against Miami. There was nobody open down there. <laughs> there was nobody <laughs> open, nobody there. You had a look at Ira Matthews, the rookie from Wisconsin. He's positioned himself near midfield. This is George Roberts standing in his end zone. Roberts, oh, he oh and he really pounded this one. Matthews driven all the way back to his 37-yard line. That's almost a flip. Got a good run, run, and he's close to a picket line. Out over the 45 to the 47. And Oakland will have I guess we have position. Omaha to thank for this, Derek. Punt by George <laughs> Roberts, following Ray Guy's 59-yard punt. There was a late flag on that last punt. Our officials picked it up. One of the Miami Dolphins, who does not wear a receiver number, came in on the punting team. He did not report. Five-yard illegal procedure penalty against Miami. Oakland takes the penalty, and Roberts will kick again. He got the return oh, on. He hit another fine punt. George Roberts, Ira Matthews at his 45-yard line. Stumbles and falls and not deal. <laughs> that was a 50-yard punt by George Roberts. That's good punt. There is a great look at a beautiful city. City of San Francisco, right over the bay. That's the Bay Bridge nearest to you. Kind of reminds you of Mount Vernon, Texas, doesn't it, Dandy? Oh, it makes me <laughs> want to strike up in song. Looks like about three Bakersfields. Oh, yeah. Not bad field position, guys. Not at all. Near midfield, the Open Raiders. <laughs> Steve Sylvester nudged it up a couple of inches as he adjusted the ball. <laughs> that always helps. Hand off Mark Van Egan and Van Egan. Powers to the 45-yard line inside the 45 of the Dolphins. Give him six, it'll be second and four. And all of our viewers have watched that for so many years. Oakland trying to run the ball off the left side of Gene Uck, behind Gene Uckshaw and Art Shell. And uh, they can establish that kind of running, they're going to be tough. By the way, Gene Upshaw started his 176th consecutive game tonight. Number 63 on the left side for the Raiders. One second and four. Gabler, wide open, Casper has the first down. Tech's on more down at the 32. And you could be right, Fran. Al Davis, with all the injuries, his personnel, 14 players on the injured reserve, might be using both Casper and Raymond Chester to kind of showcase him, if you will. All right, here goes Dave Casper right here catching it. Al Davis told me, oh, a few months ago, that he thought Dave Casper was the most dominant player at his position of anybody in football. Pretty good statement, huh? That's, yeah, rather strong. That's strong. And coming in tonight, the other tight end, Raymond Chester, for the Oakland Raiders, had 25 receptions. That tied in for first in the NFL. Two effective tight ends on first and ten. Handoff, Van Egan. And Bo Kemper pulls him down from behind at the 30-yard line after a gain of a couple. It'll be second and eight. I tell you, Kim Bo Kemper, 6'6", 245, is agile. He really is. They put him down in the down position many times, but he plays off the block here by Chester. Plays off really strong. Comes in 
and that takes strength to be able to grab the guy by the hand, pull him down. Six foot six. And a lot. And Lou Henry. May not get this off before the two-minute warning. Looks like Stabler doesn't want to get it off. He's going to get a jump on it, move over, and have a chit-chat with head coach Tom Flores. Looks up at the clock, sees the two-minute warning. And we'll be returning to Oakland on a beautiful night for football after this message. That, of course, in the Cotton Bowl. We'll be in Texas Stadium on the following night. That's Sunday night, a special telecast to ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, typically on Sunday, for Dallas and the Los Angeles Rams. Stabler now 8 of 14, 85 yards. Looking over a second down and eight. The ball just inside the 30-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. No score. Both teams battling back and forth between the 30-yard lines. You go for Casper. Got Casper there, but a flag's down also. And oh, good defensive play. Good defensive play by... This is Gerald going to Small. be a superstar, Gerald Small. He is really something different. Flag down again at the line of scrimmage. Looks like a holding call against Oakland. And the way Shell's talking to the referee, it must be his second one. He was caught earlier in the game on a holding call. <laughs> we mentioned he's just returned to the lineup tonight, so maybe he's just a little bit slow. So hold it down here a little bit, guys. He's been out since the second preseason game. And Art Shell may not be Art either. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> holding number 78. Oh, Offense. It's okay. Still second down. It's okay that I said it, man. You're right on it. You're right on it, Dandy. Oh, I've got eyes like a hawk, friend. I don't know whether you've ever known that or not, but I mean, just eyes like a hawk. I've known that for a lot of years. Yeah. I've watched it. Miami takes the penalty, moving Oakland back to the 40-yard line. Second down, 19. Stabler, that's Casper. A lot of time. Casper with a leap. All right. To the 23. Oh, uh -huh. he's, oh he's, he's trying to lateral. Down. He tried to lateral. No, he's in his awesome. down. And they're saying no, he was down. Ernest Roan came up with it. Yeah, I think it was just a bubble, Frank. I don't think he was trying to lateral. Boy, what a great catch. Let's see him get off this line. That's pretty tough. Right there. Gordon with oh. He was oh. trying to, <laughs> hey, he was trying to lateral. He was down before the lateral attempt, as you'll see. Well, they are crazy up here in Oakland. I'd say they do all sorts of jumps. Larry Gordon was all over Casper. He moved away from him. Colsey applied the hit, a former Oakland Raider. Here's Casper, knowing where the first down marker is. He's tried down. to lateral, but he's down. Third down, less than a yard now for the Oakland Raiders. And they take a timeout. He's got the two big men in there. Booker Russell comes in along with Mark Van Egan. Russell adjusts into a wing position. They move off Art Shell and pounding away for the first down. Right. Mark Van Egan gets down to about the 17-yard line. Interesting stat. The Miami Dolphins have not been shut out in the first half in their last 37 games. And they are in, that little statistic is in desperate jeopardy at the moment. They really haven't been able to sustain any kind of drive, Frank. Uh, Oakland has just had a, well, they've, they've got this ball on the 50, so they've moved it 30-something yards. Now they got to just keep pumping it to Casper. He's getting open. Stabler now getting the time on first and 10. Look. And he is wide right open. Right open. Oh. Uh -oh. No, he did not come down in bounds. Oh, wow. Bo Camper was back there alone with Cliff Branch. He did a number on Norris Thomas, I believe is who it is, friend. Let's see if we can pick it up. Yeah. I was really watching Casper earlier. He's trying to, Casper's trying to go a little turn-in route. But he looked over, that's Cliff Branch. You see that Ooh. Thomas <laughs> fell down back there. The ball was up a little high. Let's see, you got to get them both in, and he Pretty didn't close. quite do it. That was close. He banged that knee to the ground just outside. The foot came down inside, but the knee had already touched. Oakland with 120 yards of offense. Miami with 32. Second down and 10. And Casper out of the game. The two wide receivers look are Look out, there. look out. Stabler dumps it off. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage. I don't think it had to do with Stabler's attempt to get rid of the football. John Shula wants to find out what's going on. Needs a little exercise. We're going to have another holding call against Oakland. Don Shula, who has guided teams to four different Super Bowls, took Baltimore there, 69. Carried the Dolphins to the Super Bowl three times. 
You know, this has been the pattern of the night. When you look, when it looks like a team is going to take over and take control. Holding number 66, offense, still second down. Steve Sylvester filling in for Dave Dalby at center. That's four holding calls against Oakland. To make the point, when somebody's going to take control, they uh, kind of fall down, Don. Yeah, they can't quite get that thing oh. going, can they? Second down, 20. What do you do, Don? Get half of it? Well, yeah, you kind of like to do that. For one thing, for sure, you want to try to get a little bit closer. You want to come away here with something. He's got Casper by himself. Oh, he sure does. Screen to uh -oh. Van Egan, and he looked away from the ball too quickly. It was right in his hands. Looked away from it, trying to pick up his blocks. Incomplete. Really frustrating there. Uh, from, uh, say from the quarterback standpoint, of course, Van Egan certainly didn't try to. But look at this over the other side. Had to be a mess assignment somewhere, would you say? There was nobody out there. Well, what they had, they had two wide receivers on the other side, Don, and he had uh, Norris Thomas man-to-man, -man, and even though Thomas is a cornerback, man-to-man -man with Dave Casper is not a match. You know, Dave was split out a little bit. He wasn't really in his tight end position. Right. Of course, the call was a screen. You don't deviate from that. The two wide receivers are in. Martini is in. Casper out. Third down. He's got him. Got him open, Ooh. Martini, and he overthrows. And Stabler got pounded. And there on Stabler was Doug Betters. Stabler now 9 of 18, 101 yards, and we're going to see Jim Breach come on for Oakland to try and get the goose eggs off the scoreboard. The holder will be Dave Hum. Jim Breach, who replaced Earl Mann, a free agent out of the University of California. Came late last year. He's 5 of 7 thus far on the year. That last pass is a good example of a receiver and quarterback not having a great deal of time to work together. It's not a really very well run route. 44 yard attempt. 43 seconds remaining in the half. As the distance, and it's wide. Wide to the right. I think it was tipped. Did you think it was tipped on? I thought I saw somebody tip the ball. Well, I really didn't, man. I don't know, but he could have. If you had tipped it, he would have sight. He's tipped it. They would have kicked it out of the stadium because yeah. he had a lot of foot in it. That's it. See, now, right, where's that tipster? Yeah. Nobody tipped it. They had a tall jumpster. That looked like it was going in there, and he just barely missed it to the right. Hit it really good. Miami has 39 seconds. The ball taken over at the line of scrimmage. 27-yard line. Don't forget, highlights coming up at halftime along with Howard's report and an interview with the starting pitchers for tomorrow's first game of the World Series, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Here comes Dale Williams. And Williams out of the 35 to the 36, short of a first down by about a yard. And Miami, I believe, calls timeout. Yes, they do. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by Bob Kuchenberg, a whale of a guy as well as a football player, brought to you as a public service by Bob and the National Football League. Second down, about a half a yard. Speaking of Bob Kuchenberg, he made the Pro Bowl last year as a tackle. He, well, he could just do it all. You know, he played there, that guard position there for a while, back in the tackles. But I, is, is, uh, I read a statistic. All these offensive linemen for Miami have at least seven years' experience. Is that right, Frank? They do. Second down. Less than a yard for first. Greasy, too long. Has to pull it down, but he gets out of the trap. Oh, Pops the football. He fumbled. And he recovered it. And he things, got the first down. <laughs> things are bouncing your way when that happens, I guarantee you. <laughs> Second still ticking away. I think I'd let it run out, Bob. <laughs> that's an indication. Pretty good protection. Again, that secondary and linebackers are doing a good job covering. Bob didn't have anybody really wide open. He doesn't want to run. He has a pulled hamstring that's still bothering him. That ball finally just got right back into his little tummy there. Bobby, you were, it was sure chancy there for a while, Bobby. And he comes up with the first down. Not that that is too meaningful because there's 12 seconds remaining. He said, let's go. Forget this thing. Go in the half. We're getting in the locker room. We'll talk about it. No, they did not call timeout. They're going to have to hurry if they're going to get a playoff. Well, Shula wanted to get it off. Maybe Bob didn't. He goes again. It's Reggie Kinlaw once again. And Greasy is sacked for the fifth time. <laughs> no score from Oakland. Two offensive-minded football teams have goose eggs on the scoreboard and we will be back with highlights and interview for Baltimore.
It's been a defensive battle thus far. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Raider Tony Reaction Taylor. Black Friday as we dust off another classic from the Raider Archives. It's Monday Night Football, October 8, 1979, the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Raider legends all over the field. Midfield, and Bob Greasy will tell you right now, does still feel that pulled hamstring. We saw him try to run on a scramble uh, ineffectively. He did get the first down. He did not want to run. Let's take a look at the stats for the first half. And it is a kind of game that uh, puzzles you somewhat when you consider the explosiveness of both of these teams. Oakland with 120 yards of offense, Miami with 35, and what do you think, Don? I just, I really don't understand it, Frank. Because if one team was maybe dominating the other, you could find some sort of trend in it. But it, to me, they're, it's almost like they're not really hitting on all cylinders, either team. There's something a little bit off by that. I don't know what it is. Francis? Don, uh, tell me this. When was, the, when was the last time Miami was shut out in the first half? Oh, I remember that was against Minnesota in 1976. <laughs> I knew you'd know it. I'd yeah. your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> It must be uh, something goes with just sitting in this seat I'm in, you know? Uh, just total recall. Thanks, just come you back are in the throne seat I am there. sitting on the throne. Ha! Ah! Well, what are... Not only that, you're very truculent. That's right. I'm <laughs> truculent. <laughs> I, have a, I have a veritable plethora of insignificant trivia is what I have. We'd like, just at the moment, if we could, to extend our sympathies to the family and the friends of Bob Peck. One of the members of the Denver Bronco organization who passed away this past week. Great man, great friend of all of ours. And to all of his friends and his family, our deepest sympathies. He was a wonderful man. What a nice man he was, really and truly. You saw Ray Guy. He does the kicking off for Oakland. Goes along the ground, and Tony Nathan takes it at the seven. It'll be a hole. Uh oh, he oh, 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 Oakland has it. There it is. Oakland. As the first big break of the night, they'll have possession at the 27-yard line. It was number 26, that's Hawkins, who got in there and picked it up. And that's how you really move on in special teams. That's Clarence Hawkins. He's a rookie out of Florida A&M. He was there when the ball fell. So Clarence Hawkins sets up the Oakland Raiders inside the 29-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Danny, does he go for the big strike here? You got to. I throw three times in a row. I would too. Four, maybe. The two tight ends are both in there. The tight end offense for the Raiders. They used effectively against Denver last week. They stay with it. That's why we're up here. Thank <laughs> Van Egan gets the call left side. Gets a couple of yards close to the 25-yard line. Giving three. It'll be second and seven. Larry Gordon, the bottom of that pile. mentioned earlier, Fred, and I, I do think it's, they're trying to establish some sort of run. For years, they have gone off that left side, you know, the shell and upshell, but they really have had some injuries. They have them tonight. They're yeah. not the same team. They don't have that real good strong run. You're right. right. Dave Dalby out of there at center. That's Steve Sylvester pulling in. Second and seven, Stabler. That's Casper. Oh, yeah. And it's Casper. Casper has the first down, 15-yard line. Larry Gordon out there trying to defend against Casper, and that's almost impossible. Right, here's a very interesting play. The halfback is going to circle out of the backfield, takes the cornerback out. Casper has a little lay out to the outside. See the halfback running down the bottom of your screen? He cleared the pattern out. Casper has caught this now two times tonight, same pattern. Here's exactly the same pattern. Fred, you're Good right. Uh, Gordon, number 50, he sees that back coming out of the backfield. He tries to chuck Casper, goes with the guy out in the swing, comes back too late. Good France goes wide right. He gets single coverage, but they go with the handoff to Derek Tello. He's piled up there. Steve Toll initially for Miami, the defender at the line of scrimmage. It's impossible to tell you about all the injuries because, as I mentioned earlier, there are 14 players on injured reserve for the Oakland Raiders. They have Tom Flores and Al Davis had a duck for a pet. He'd probably drown in this season. On second and ten. Had a duck and would probably drown. Whoa! Touchdown, Oakland, a great catch. What a catch. He was being covered by Foley. Foley is six feet tall, ran to Chester 6'4". He went up and came down with it. Kind of got the feeling that Foley thought he had that one knocked away. Probably tipped it, but not far enough. So Oakland breaks it open. Foley 
just could not get high enough to take it away. Good protection here. This is why you have, uh, they're playing a double tight end. You got the other guy, other than Casper Chester, to go up and make a catch like that. That is absolutely incredible to have two of them like that. <laughs> Dave Hum is the holder. Jim Breach. Bouncing, and it's it. no good. I, he just flat missed it. It wasn't blocked. It wasn't touched. He was just wide, and now we have a little scuffle on the field. No flags down. Pushed it the same way as Bill Gold, Frank. All right, we've seen a lot of things tonight. The Raiders lead the Miami Dolphins at the six to nothing, and we'll be returning in just a moment. Raymond Chester has caught four tonight for 55 yards. He is getting attention paid to his leg at the moment. He has the Oakland Raiders on the scoreboard. Four plays, 28 yards off. Stabler to Chester, six to nothing. Miss conversion by Breach. Ray Guy pounds it to Tony Nathan in the end zone. Flag is down as Tony Nathan goes down at the 22-yard line. And the word is that Raymond Chester has twisted his knee. We don't know how severely he is standing up. Now he is seated once again, being attended to by the medical staff of the Open Raiders. Penalty flag on the kickoff. I think it's about time we're going to have to give that open, uh, not have to. Let's see what we got here. Holding number 60, receiving team, first down. Jeff Taves, holding for the Miami Dolphins. Brother of Lauren Taves, the Pittsburgh Steelers. First and ten, Miami begins from the ten-yard line. They have not crossed midfield thus far. goes to Dell Williams. Zonk out in front with a block, and Williams the just has not been able to get on track this year. Running well, feels fine. This has not been able to put it together. He moves out to the 14-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second and six, and Raymond Chester is getting attention to his right knee. It's a good defensive play by Villapiano who came out there because I really think if Dell Williams had, if there had not been a uh, Villapiano, Williams would have really been in that secondary and done some damage in there, but Bill's been doing that for a long time up here. Second down, six, the ball just short. 15-yard line, marked at the 14. Zonka gets the call and carries Dave Pear forward. Short of the first down. Third down, call it about a yard and a half for the Dolphins. Just really have not been able to get it in gear tonight. They come out in their short yardage offense. And off Zonka, he just <laughs> lunges forward out over the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Zonka gets the first down for Miami. Zonka adds to the Miami Dolphin football team. On first and 10. Oh! Hendricks, he's done it many times. And Reese, he's doing right in the arms of the start. Ted Hendricks. His 23rd career interception is an Oakland touchdown. Well, he ran such a good route. I don't much blame him for hitting him, Fred. He was really wide open. He didn't break stride. Let's see if Dave Pear comes in and gives some trouble. You mentioned Pear, number 74. He really didn't. That ball was, I thought maybe he might have blocked his view. What can you say about that one? He's been doing it for so many years. It all began back in Baltimore in 69. He did it in Green Bay. Came to Oakland 75. Oakland had to give up a couple number one draft picks for that man, and you can see why they were willing to do it. Jim Reach for the conversion. He got a little thrill a few moments ago when he missed one. There he says, now I got it. This time right in the heart, and another scuffle breaks out. Now Tipper's out there tonight. Oakland has the lead. 13 and nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Ted Hendricks just ambled in with a Bob Greasy pass on an interception. Put the Oakland Raiders on top, 13 to nothing. We have 10-34 remaining here in the third quarter. Ray Guy busts another one. It'll be taken by Tony Nathan, and the rookie from Alabama gets out over the 20 to the 24-yard line. And Miami will give it another go. And they, quite frankly, are lifeless tonight. 
Frank getting back to the interception that Greasy threw for the touchdown to Hendricks. It's the second week in a row he's done that. He, uh, in the New York Jet game a week ago, he threw a square out out to the sideline. It was intercepted, then run back for a touchdown. That's where he re-injured that uh, hamstring. Is really trying to chase the guy down on that touchdown run. You know, Bob really hasn't had a typical greasy year so far up to now. He's uh, had some injuries, but he's really off to a slow start for him. We mentioned earlier, he went out of the Minnesota game with Miami trailing. Strzok came in and won it. Strzok went all the way to defeat the Bears, and Greasy came back last week to lose to the Jets, 27-33. On first and ten. Greasy, Dell Williams. And he battles close to a first down. He is about a half a yard short. Phil Villapiano was there to corral Adele Williams. Monty Johnson also pitching in. It'll be second down, about a yard. I'll tell you one thing, guys. That 13-point lead is going to make Miami get out of that, uh, give it to Zonka off left tackle up the middle every time. <laughs> It'll be here a month to catch up with that kind of action. Uh, Brooke, change of game plans. Although here they may give it to him. Darrell Harris, 82, Nat Moore, 89, wide receivers. Quick toss, Dell Williams finds an opening, and he's upended, hit there by Mike Davis, second-year man out of Colorado, playing strong safety for the Oakland Raiders, but Dell Williams gets the first down. Ball is at the 38-yard line. Miami's deepest penetration thus far tonight has been midfield. Dell Williams gets the call over the 40, out to the, close to the 42-yard line, a gain of about four. It'll be second down, six. Dell Williams, who had his best year after a couple of superior years with the 49ers last year when he went to Miami for a first and a fifth round draft pick. He had 1,258 yards. And a classy guy, Frank. He really came out of not the best part of Houston to live in and uh, really quite a story. Goes to Kansas. Has a great career up there. Graduated in four years. Well, well, second with the Dolphins straightened up. False start, number 71, offense. Grant on the false start for Miami. This is really not a Miami Dolphin team that we've watched for so many years. Tom Flores, however, likes the situation. Matuzak, you see right there. Matuzak has been injured the last couple of weeks. He's suited up tonight. But they uh, didn't really expect him to play unless it was absolutely necessary, I'm told. There's a torn bicep right here. It must be a big tear. Yeah. Well, There's a lot of man. 6'8", 275 pounder. One of the many Oakland Raiders that just cannot get back into that lineup because of nagging injuries. The penalty. Creates a second down and 11 situation. The ball at the 37. Greasy in a crowd. Hustles loose. Oh, tries to get it to Del Williams. Phil Villapiano was with him, but Greasy had to hustle out of the pocket. They're down and 11 rush. Oakland's gone to that six defensive back lineup again and four down linemen. Now only leaves one more. Lucy looking for time to throw the ball. Gets it to Matt Moore. Matt Moore away from one Raider, but he's going to come up short of the first down as he pounded to the turf at the 46. And he got a lot of pressure again from those front four guys. Willie Jones, a rookie from Florida State, was in there. Well, here's our money guy, Nat Moore, coming out, running a little option uh, play here. Watch the run he makes after he gets the ball. This is what makes him so great. I'll tell you, he is a great one, too. In just six years, he is the leading Dolphin receiver. He's had 34 touchdowns. Hey, watch this, Frank. They're going to go for it. Well, this is uh, 13 to nothing. I don't know. 740 remaining in the third quarter. They might just be trying to draw him off. We'll see. It's a gutsy call. It's a little more than a yard. Yeah, a yard and a half. Oh, they got an offside. They and did. They got them. They did. But they were going to go for it. It looked like Willie Jones, the rookie. And they did not make it. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> offsides. <laughs> and if he was not drawn off, Miami's strategy has paid off. That is really amazing. Lost a yard. <laughs> Somebody up there with him. Better to be lucky than good, someone once said. Yeah, there had to be three Raider defenders who I know would be telling all the other Raiders, stay on sides. <laughs> and there is a Raider down on the field. Or a Miami Dolphin is down. 
You know, the Dolphins still are struggling offensively. They really haven't established anything. I know Greasy's probing around trying to find something he can uh, count on, and he really hadn't done it yet, Don. Now, I'm really impressed with this Oakland defensive show tonight. They're really putting on a good one. They give you a lot of different looks. They've got them all up at the line of scrimmage right now. First and ten. Greasy. Right on the money. Oh. It's dropped by Bruce Hardy. A pass that could have been caught. It would have been difficult. But he does not hold on. Mike Davis was covering Bruce Hardy. Looked like from up here, that's the only place he was open, though, Fran. Let's see if we can take a look. Got some fairly good protection that time. They're beginning to close in on him a little bit. Low and away. Good throw. And that was about it. Yeah, that ball should have been caught, I think. Good throw. He protected the ball away from the defensive back, which the quarterback should do, and he gave his guy a chance to catch it, and uh, it was very catchable. Change and setbacks. Gary Davis, 27. Norm Bulash, 31. They like to come into the game. Big boo. On a passing situation. Second and ten. There he is. Right on the money. And oh, yeah. That more. Gets the first down. 35-yard line. Can't do much about that one, man. That was thrown to the outside. Surprised they haven't been there before because they're working against a rookie, Henry Williams. Let's look again. Well, there's not much magic here except he got good protection again and just made a nice throw and a good comeback catch over there. There's number one man on that more. That's where Monty Jackson ordinarily would be to find all pro defensive back. But he has a sore knee, cannot play. As you see, a good move to the inside by Moore, break to the outside, and Henry Williams, the rookie from San Diego State, was four or five yards from the receiver. First and ten, the ball up the 35-yard line of Oakland. Miami beginning to threaten. Whoa, Donka oh, finds oh, a big oh. opening. <laughs> and he over the Z motor. Another Miami first down as Anka gets in the 25, inside the 25, close to the 23. Well, there's that agent right side doing a pretty good job there, Dandy. Yeah, kicked him out. They call that three-man front, and the good blocks all the way around. That's a good close off of Monty Johnson in the middle linebacker there. By our new tight end, Bruce Hardy, who dropped the ball. You notice, how, you notice how timid those defensive backs are around Zonka down there. I don't see anybody just <laughs> taking him straight up. Smart defensive backs. He's right in there between 235 and 240. Give him a gap, and he'll make a big hole out of it. On first down, Greasy Ooh. going to Matt Moore, and I think we're going to have interference yeah, call. We are. Should be on Henry Williams. Henry Williams, and all of a sudden, Greasy has discovered Henry Williams out at the right corner for Oakland. Tim is upset. They surely couldn't have called him for interference, could they? Frank, in fairness to Henry Williams, he really played played well out there tonight. And they're going to keep him. Let's Illegal use of hands, number 67. It was. Defense. It wasn't. First off. It was Tumay. Tumay. against Pat Tumay. It wasn't against Henry Williams. Sorry, Henry Williams. But Henry Williams has played well out there. But if you've got him out there by himself against Nat Moore, uh, he's not going to cover him. Nobody else is either. Well, what do you think Dufay did in there that would be illegal use of the hands on a defensive end? Head slap, possibly, huh? You think? I don't know. That would have been a personal foul, though. In any event, first and 10 Miami inside the 20-yard line at the 19. Tonka gets the oh, ball. big opening, and he lunges to the 10-yard line. Short of another Miami first down by about a yard. Hit there by Pat Tume. When you see that play go up the middle like that, you think you think of Jim Langer, the great center. Let's watch Langer's block here. He made his block on Dave Fair, blocked him out and got it. You know, Jim Langer's an interesting story. He has told the Dolphins that he will not play in Miami next year. He said he'll either play in Minnesota for the Minnesota Vikings next year, which is his home state, or he won't play at all. And he's only 31 years old, still as good a center as there is in football. I would say so. Six Pro Bowls for Langer. They would miss him if he left. Second down, a long yard. Zonka goes forward. Oh, boy. He's corralled by Dave Fair. He's going to be... Short of the first down, or maybe a foot or two feet. Looked like they had a little hole right up the middle that time. Monty Johnson played a little deep. Those defensive tackles were wide. But they went to the outside anyway, and it's third down in about a yard. And Ronnie Lee comes back into the game. You saw him lip off a few moments ago, the rookie tied in. He comes in there on the short yardage situation. Well, if I were there, Don, I'd think run here because if he doesn't make it on third down, he's going to come back and go again on fourth down. And we'll see no field goals kicked here, so I would think a running play here. 
Yeah, you're right. The big man, Zonka, gets the call. Easy first down. It'll be first and goal at the six-yard line for Miami, which started to pull things together after being down 13 to nothing. He's right in front of Kuchenberg, so I wouldn't be surprised for him to come back over there again. 13th play of this drive, helped considerably by an offsides call at midfield. Oh, my God! He just lowered his head. Tossed off an Oakland Raider. Jack Tatum finally drops him, but not until Zonka's inside the one-yard line. 12 carries, 52 yards for Zonk. Again, that whole left side of the line, Fran. Look at this. They're blocking down. they got double-team pair. Look at Kuchenberg on top There's Jack. of uh, Tume. Tatum just took a ride. Yes, he sir. Did. Who would you give it to here? 39. Well, I'd quarterback <laughs> sneaking myself. <laughs> Drive started on their own 25-yard line. Turn back to Zonka. It'll be third and short. I didn't see anything wrong with that left tackle. You know, that's an interesting thing, Don, you brought up. You know, they've had good success running off the left tackle in two short yardage situations. They've been caving the whole side down, and you go up the middle. I've always thought if you got something going, you keep doing it until they stop and take it away from you. I would certainly think they'd go off that left tackle this time. We saw a quick look at Don Shulu as a great personal affection for Larry Zonka. They're in the eye formation. They're going to have a hard time doing it. Eye formation, they think they get that to uh, Delvin Williams. Third, less than a yard. Oh, it looked like it might have been a dolphin. You saw the flags fly. I think you're right, Frank. It might have been Kuchenberg over on the left side. It was Del Williams got the call. Or Ronnie Lee, the, the young tight end. Oh, that's really tough. That's a tough. pair of the Raiders, number 74, indicates it's going to go against Miami. Oh, and I'll it. tell you, a flag, two flags went, but we're going to have the procedure call against Miami. That hurts. You think that's not the uh, kind of composure. You, know, you can make some mistakes in a lot of places, but the places you don't make them are down on that goal line. And that's why our coaches say, give me that experience. It usually pays off. That time the experience was there, and they still jumped off. False start, offense, still third down. Left side, could be Bob Kuchenberg, number 67. Let's take a look. Nope, it's the left it's, end. Uh, it's Ronnie Lee. Lee, the rookie, and that's not going to make Mr. Shula happy at all. Yep, there was that inexperience again there on the inside. All right, I still think they go two plays here, and it's uh, third down. you got to throw the ball. 3-11 in the third quarter. Got it over, over Miami, 13 to nothing. Third down and goal. The ball just short of the five-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Greasy has the tight end. Nope. Throws into his tight end. Into Bruce Hardy. Bill Piano was back there, 41. Good defensive play. And out comes the field, the defensive unit, and the field goal unit for the Miami Dolphins. Francis, I've always felt this was the toughest part of the field to for uh, your passing game to work. You don't have that much room for the guys to maneuver down there. They don't have that much long to fake them out. They were pretty well covered. All three receivers he had out were pretty well covered. Especially in that situation, you use a straight drop back to know you've got to throw down there. You've only got 15 yards to throw it in. Don Strock is a holder. He's a quarterback. That has to be a consideration. Von Shaman, a rookie from Oklahoma for the field goal attempt from 23 yards. Right through the middle. And Miami has erased their goose egg from the scoreboard. They now trail the Oakland Raiders 13-3. to They missed a golden opportunity, however, for six. The Miami Dolphins at a third and inches for a touchdown. The illegal procedure call. They had to settle for a field goal. Uva Von Schaumann will kick off for Miami. Ira Matthews is deep number 43 along with Larry Brunson. We'll watch it from the end zone. And Ira Matthews from the five-yard line for Oakland. Watch out! Watch out! He can motor. All Quick. right. Von Shawman made the save out of the 38-yard line, 48-yard line, as Ira Matthews, a little six-round draft pick out of Wisconsin. He's only 5'8", 175 pounds, but he can motor. From 
most impressive thing about this is going to be the tackle that the kicker makes, Von Schaumann, on this little Ira Matthews. He led the nation last year in Wisconsin. He's got plenty of room to make a move. Von Schaumann makes a whale of a play. Now, he's a very good athlete, Von Schaumann. He was drafted in the North American Soccer League as a goalie by Dallas. Frank, up to this play, Oakland's had the ball four plays in the third quarter, scored 13 points in the third quarter. Not bad, not bad production. First and ten, Oakland from their own 48-yard line. Derek Jensen over the left side. It gets into Miami territory at the 49. Pick up of three. It'll be second down and seven. Look at the possession time. Most of it on the part of Miami occurred on that drive that began on their own 25-yard line. Over seven minutes they used. I think it's got to hurt them to come away with only three points. There's our Matthews. Yes, sir. We see you. Wave to the world. Led the nation in punt returns a year ago, but he also led the nation in kickoff returns as a sophomore. Second down, seven. And Eagle. Hounds over the left side. Runs into Steve Toll, thrown back, but his forward progress short of a first down, but at the 44 yard line, it'll be third down and a long one. Ordinarily, you see A.J. Dewey in there. Third, less than a yard. Three setbacks in there. Booker Russell, Mark Van Egan, Derek Jensen. <laughs> Van Egan gets the call. Good defense. He's close. I don't think he got it. I don't believe so. What's up, Raider that Nation? If you're just joining us, this is another edition of Raider Reaction yeah, Black Friday, yes, hosted by the commission as we open the doors oh, to the Silver and Black Theater. Dust off a Raider oh, classic. Tonight, we welcome you back okay, in time to the Oakland on, Alameda on. County Coliseum. October 8th, 1979. Monday night football. As you have the 4 and 1 Dolphins coming to town to face off against the 3 and 2 Oakland Raiders. Green Bay with a good lead. They tried it on Every down, didn't make it. Friday that on Raider Reactions. It didn't seem to matter. Black Nothing Friday. would have mattered that night. There's the professor there uh, studying his, uh, his doctorate. Yeah, getting his doctorate there. I don't think he's going to find any secret plays in that phase there. <laughs> Matt Moore is deep for Miami. Ray Guy will or should angle this for the sidelines. Looking for the corner. He's got it. And he has got it. Yep. Oh, he's got it. He oh, did. Oh, great guy. I knew he Oh, boy. He's jumping up and down. He puts it out of bounds on the three-yard line. And a 41-yard effort to boot. That he's done it even twice tonight. Statistics. So, Miami will be getting in trouble. They're in trouble on the scoreboard, and they take over at their own three. We'll be... Great guy just pounded one out of bounds at the three-yard line and picked up 41 yards on the effort. What a really special weapon he is to have on your side. He can really do it. Great yeah. guy, Thomasville, Georgia. How about that, Number Andy? one draft pick to the Oakland Raiders. They've never been sorry. They made him the first pick in 73. Gonka gets the assignment to and get Miami out of trouble, and he pounds it all the way out for a Miami first down at the 15-yard line, close to it. Now, Frank, that's a heck of a move there. That, that, if you got a guy like that, they've double team. You see, how in the world did Pear not tackle him? Well, I don't know. They pulled. That's really strange. Pear got off on the wrong foot some way. Ed Newman was pulling out in front of him. He should have been following that guard down there. Big holes. Zonka picked up the first. I know not many people care, but Ray Guy's not from Thomasville. Danny's from Thompson, George. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, man, but I didn't I want to. That, you know. Bill Williams. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh. He's got an open field. Watch out. Oh, and he can move, but he's pulled down by Willie Jones, a big defensive end who can really fly. Made the save. As Dell Williams got away from one Oakland Raider, it was Monty Johnson who had penetrated behind the play. Watch Dell get away from Johnson right here. Well, number one, you think about two plays when these guys started on the three-yard line. Right there, that was almost. John, Monty Johnson came in, let him go. Look at all the guys out in front of him. Gets a block by move. Newman. There's old Ronnie another Lee. by Ronnie Lee. And that is the end of the third quarter with Oakland leading Miami 13-3. to We'll be back with the fourth quarter in a moment. Our cameraman, Art Pepper, in the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, hovering overhead, showing you the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, where right now we begin the fourth quarter with Oakland out in front of Miami, 13 to 3, but Miami has all of a sudden come to life. They've had a spark. They have the ball, first and 10, their own 45-yard line. 
Tonka gets the call. Wide left. Goes forward. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Larry Tonka just pounding over Oakland Raiders. Yeah. I tell you, he's the only one in football that can do that. Was that Rod Martin that he hit first out there? Indeed, Indeed. it was. Number 53. Uh -huh. He just ran right over the top of it. All right, here comes Zonk. You know, at the top of the show, Larry Zonka said he likes to run behind this line. He knows the superior line to the New York Giant line. But look here. He didn't have any blocking here. He runs over everybody. That's Jack Tatum. There's no better tackle than Jack Tatum. He took Martin first, then he took Jack Tatum. He gets another first down. The ball at the 42-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Good run, Zonk. God, so many legends in this game, man. <laughs> hey, Oakland is not to start thinking run. It should help Greasy in his passing game. Dell Williams. That's behind the block by Zonka. Gets about six yards to the 35-yard line. It'll be second and four. Tackled there by Mike Davis. Uh, you know, Frank, I want to make a point about Larry Zonk. You know, the Giants signed him as a free agent. Now, they didn't have to give any kind of compensation to the Dolphins, but Wellington Mayor of the Giants gave the Dolphins two third-round draft choices in exchange for Zonka. Pretty good tribute to Mr. Mara to do that, because nobody else compensated anybody nearly like that. I can think of a lot of other owners who maybe not have been so yeah. considerate. Second down to four, Williams gets the call, and he gets the first down at the 30-yard line, first and ten. I really do like the way that guy runs. Williams has got some... Nice move. Well, they got it going and they're doing it with the running game. How do you go that far with the running game? I don't know. That's that's really something. First and ten. Miami just short of Oakland's 30-yard line. Dell Williams gets the call. He finds a little gap over the left side. He exploits it down close to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. It'll be second and five. You know, our, our viewers out there might wonder why they stay with the running game when they're 10 points down. The important thing is 13 minutes and 20 seconds left in this game. They've got plenty of time to win it. As long as they're running like that, you stay with it. Miami 4-1, and one, the leaders in the AFC's Eastern Division. Oakland, they're 2-3 and three on their season. Denver, Kansas City, and San Diego are tied for the lead in the AFC's West. They're all 4-2. and two. Second and five. Zonka. Oh. Oh, he has another Miami first down of the 20. It's almost like a wing T set they had after that time. Moving back to the weak side. By the way, Zonka's record at Syracuse went down the drain this past weekend. Joe Morris broke Zonka's record. He picked up 252 yards against Kansas. Single game rushing record. A young Joe Morris of Syracuse. The call goes to Zonka again. Right side this time. Piled up, and that before he sprawls forward for a cup, and it'll be second down and eight, the ball at the 18. Maybe he's going to throw here, Don. He's been running all the way down the field, but yeah. second and eight, you would think he would, wouldn't you? He has Duriel Harris up to the left against rookie Henry Williams, right cornerback for Oakland. He wants Harris, and nobody there. Ball deflected. Good defensive coverage. But he went to the wrong place because Henry Williams is there covering Harris, but he also had some help. Jack Tatum, 32, has With slid Jack over Tatum, there to help Henry Williams. They doubled up over there. Third down eight. Well, that's kind of an interesting pass pattern. He had two receivers both out in the flats the, that time. Nobody was down the middle. And now he'll have to put it up in the air. Gary Davis comes in. He's a pretty good receiver. He comes in. Out goes Larry Zonka. And the Dolphins haven't mastered this defense. This is that six defensive back situation. Four down linemen and leave one linebacker in. And that one linebacker is Monty Johnson. Third and eight. Big play for Miami. Watch that more. Fired over the middle. All right. Moore. And he's going to be short of the first down. And this is going to be an interesting call also. It'll be fourth down. About a yard and a half for a first. They've got that thing. Uh, do they have to go to the 10? They're going to reach the 10. I think they're going to kick the kicking team. I think they ought to. They're not going to. Well, field goal sets up a potential tie with a touchdown and conversion ahead. I'll tell you, they're putting the game on the line right here, Dandy. It's a long two yards there. Fourth to one and a half, fourth and two. It's a long way. If they don't make it here, they're really putting the game on the line. Fourth down, almost two yards. Bill Williams and Larry Zonka. Greasy says no. 
I want to think it over, time out, and he'll move over to have a further conversation with Don Shula. We'll be back in Oakland right after this message. Interesting situation here in Oakland. The Raiders have a 13-3 lead over the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have been moving the football. They had it for over 10 minutes in the third quarter. They have had it all of the fourth quarter thus far, almost five minutes. Oakland's defense has been out there for a long time. Right now, Miami has a fourth down and almost two yards at Oakland's 12-yard line. They are not going to go with the field goal. They've got to be another attempt to draw Oakland offside. They've got down here with the run. Let's see what they're going to do. Long count, hoping to draw Oakland off. They're going to go with the pass. Oh! And it. Reggie Kinlaw. Reggie Kinlaw once again. Oh, my God. Where did he come touched from? Him. Nobody touched him. Well, I don't really, uh, well. That's really put it on the line, I guess. It's right, Fred, but it's uh, really easy right now to say try to get to three points. Let's see where he came from. Down, down at the left side, he just looped around to the right, beat Larry Little. And there he is. Jim Langer, I the think, center, had pulled out. I think that's right. Langer made a mistake. He's not, he didn't pull out there. Well, I think Langer had to go out and get the linebacker blitzing on the, on the sixth down lineman. Maybe so. In any event, somebody messed up. There will be no first, and Oakland turns the Dolphins back. They have a first and ten at the 21-yard line. Sixth sack of the night on Bob Greasy. Stabler hands off to Van Egan, and the offense has to have been cooled down just a bit, <laughs> as does the Miami defense. They, these two units have not been on the field in a long while. In the point of that play, I don't think Mr. Shula's record has to be defended. Certainly, he's one of the great coaches ever to be in, be in this game. There's Reggie Kendall, the guy that made the play. But we all three said during the timeout that we thought it was a mistake to go for it at that time because... You need to kick a field goal somewhere in there, and, and I really do think it, it turned out to be a mistake, but I think it was a mistake even if they'd have made it. Oakland trying to get back on track. Van Egan picked up six, second down four, the ball at the 27. Van Egan gets the call again, piled up right at the line of scrimmage. I remind you again that Sunday night, a special telecast from Dallas on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, and it's going to be a beauty. It's going to be the Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. And they're both kind of hitting stride, it seems like, right now. The Rams had a good game against the Saints, and the Cowboys had a pretty good game against your old boys up in Minnesota. I saw him. He looked very good yesterday. How about and, uh, that door set, friend? Can he motor? Yeah, Is he he's something special or not? Uh, and the Rams really kind of came alive last week. When those two get together, they really play, play it hard. On third down and three. Stabler. Whoa. Uh, Stabler could not find the receiver. He dumped it off to Van Egan in an attempt to Van Egan. Vern Den Herter was in there in the face of Stabler. That'll bring up fourth down. That, of course, the Rams Dallas game is Sunday, and then we'll be traveling overnight. We'll be in New York on Monday night. It'll be the Jets and your old alma mater friend, the Minnesota Vikings. The old purple people leaders. First time that Monday night football has been in New York. Be kind of excited. Ray Guy to punt and Tony Nathan stands. Close to his 25-yard line, respecting the very talented foot of the game's premier punter, Ray Guy. And I think they're trying to block this thing, Gip. He's only had two blocks going into this year. There they go. Oh, they're going for it. Whoa! Guy saw that, hustled it, didn't get off a spectacular kick, but a fair catch had to be called for by Tony Nathan. He does so at the 34, and Miami's offense will come back out on the field. We'll be back in a moment. A very meaningful game, as you can see, for the Miami Dolphins. A loss tonight, they drop into a tie with New England in their Eastern Division race of the AFC. And also very meaningful for Oakland. Denver knocking off San Diego. Makes it pretty wide open. Three-way tie at the top. And how about Kansas City? Three in a row, they are motoring along. First and ten, the Dolphins. The Oakland defense has only been off the field a minute and 24 seconds to pull themselves together. Ball at the 34-yard line, 9.20 remaining in the game. Greasy fires up the middle is Bruce Hardy, short of a first down, but he has the ball out at the 42-yard line. It'll be second and two. Another Dell Williams coming out of the backfield, the receiver. Villapiano and Johnson were pretty close at hand. That ball was thrown right on the money, and Dell made a good catch. Danny, as well as Miami, as uh, there you see uh, the rushing of the night. Williams, 82 yards. Zonka, 83. Oakland, 69 yards total. 
Zonka moved by his entire total, his entire production last year with the Giants. <laughs> he needed 45 yards to do it, and he's done it with these. Williams struggles for a first down, comes up short at the 44-yard line. Don, the point I was about to make is, as well as Miami has run the ball the second half, I think in order to win the game, you've got to throw it. Your big plays are going to come from the pass, and they've got to start making some big pass plays, which they really haven't done tonight. I, I think you're right. They're more so now than that earlier drive when they just they were having so much success on the ground. They did it. I, for their sake, I'm sorry to see them get that close and come away with no points. Because then they'd only been one touchdown away. You made the point. Somebody's got to kick a field goal sometime. Larry Little comes back in. An offensive guard for Miami. Mark Denard goes out. Third down. Less than a yard for a first down. Go with the Williams. Off the out. Williams. Saw a little daylight to the right side. Squirted through for the first down. He's at the 46-yard line. Hard to notice that move, Frank. But I really think that kind of thing is what separates the really great backs from a lot of good backs in there. You, you got it. have a play call, and it goes to a certain hole, and you work all the time. Well, we've got to get this thing timed. But they, that's just an individual adjustment in there, and it's particularly helpful when he's looking for that first down. Frank, you look at the Oakland coverage. They're really doubling those two outside receivers. And it's really going to force Greasy to throw to the backs or to throw to the tight end. And with Zonka, he doesn't have the greatest receiver in the world. On first and ten. He has Hardy, but he goes to Duriel Harris. He's open. Oh, he does oh. not hold on. Good defensive play. Hustling back there was Lester Harris. Had Greasy hung it up another couple of yards. It was all over. And he really does have Lester Hayes beat here, but Lester Hayes has really got some kind of quickness. Protection is good. You see they had a, a kind of a semi-blitz on there. But the ball's a little bit underthrown. He has to wait for the ball. It allows Hayes time to come back and make a play on the ball. Dario Harris did have him beat. He did. He just one more little beam behind that. That ball would have been on time. You know, if he does have leg problems, though, Don, if he's got a hamstring pull, you've got to throw with your legs. You've got to push off there, and he may not be able to push off enough to get the ball down the field as much as he'd like to. I'll tell you, that had to give Flores, Tom Flores, the Oakland head coach, a little rush. He had two receivers open. Second down now in 10. Check out the tight end, the two backs again. Got to go to him. There's the back. Coming out oh. of the backfield, that is complete to Gary Davis. Good catch right there. Ball He's at the 47. A gain of seven. It'll be second, or rather third down and three. You know, most of the prevent coverages, there they are, the six defensive backs again, Don. They try to take away the two outside receivers and force you to throw it inside to those backs. I guess the back, what, what do they do with the tight end? They'll double him with a, a line. Do they have the linebackers in there? What do they try to do there? Well, of course, the six defensive backs, they can play a defensive back on him, but they're really doubling, they're putting four men on the outside. The, the, the tight end is by himself with one guy, but it's a defensive back. Uh huh. Miami looking for their 14th first down of this half. Oakland has managed one. Oakland on top, 13 to 3. Hardy over the middle. He Good caught catch. And he what made a catch. sensational catch. Bruce Hardy. Jack Tatum. Jack Tatum was up there almost took it out of his hands, but Hardy held on. He has a Miami first down at the 32-yard line, and Tatum is limping. I'd love to ask Jack Tatum right now if what he did was kind of lay back and play for that interception. It seemed that he just mistimed his uh, move. That's a good call, Don. You're right. I think he did, too. Because he had a chance to make an interception. As you see Greasy back in the pocket, watch Tatum come in there. Yeah. Just, you're right. I think he just misjudged it just a touch. Pretty Frank. good concentration by Bruce Hardy, Frank. Miami on the move again. On first down. He's going deep. Harris is in the end zone and is out of the way. That's Tatum back there, along with Henry Williams. Double coverage on Duriel Harris. Let's watch the double coverage. All right, you'll watch Williams play to the outside, should be on the outside of Harris. He's got inside help on him to the post, but Tatum is slow getting to the post. This ball is almost completed for a touchdown. Watch Tatum come back into the play, but he almost came back too late. Again, slightly underthrown, or it could have been six. That's right. That's two in a row. Yep. Second and ten. Good call, Jeff. You're right. Good, a good throw then could have been six. Tatum's coming off the field, Frank. He's, uh, he is hurt. He limped after he tried to break up the pass to Bruce Hardy that set up the first down at the 33. Now on second and ten. Bruce has the time and no receiver. Oh, my goodness. Ah, Picked Jeff. off Lester Hayes. I believe it's Lester Hayes. Yes, it is. Greasy just hung it up. 
for anyone to grab, and it was Lester Hayes. And Oakland comes up with the football once again. Here comes Bob again. You've seen Bob Grizzly have many great nights. This is not one of them. Comes out of the out of the pocket to a scramble, lays it up. Lester Hayes just sitting there. Makes the interception. What a great interception. Just a routine play. Oakland has the ball. Their own 22-yard line. We have 5:33 remaining in the game. Oakland with a 13-3 lead that's been threatened by a rejuvenated Miami offense that has made a couple of mistakes deep in Oakland territory. They run, no, I was going to say run left. They ran right. <laughs> Eric Jensen off to the right side. Perhaps he should have run left. He stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Maybe even lost a foot or so. No, give him a yard. It'll suck it a nine. As much offense as we've seen from Miami this half, it's, we're now looking at two fresh teams out there. <laughs> That's right. And I'll go, Lester, you were at the right place at the right time, fella. You're right. I agree with that. <laughs> Hayes became a starter last year. He was a second and fifth round draft pick in 77. Personal athlete out there. Second down. Jensen gets the call again. Turns to the inside, runs into a crowd. Down he goes out around the 28-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third down and four. They say Jack Tatum has suffered what possibly would be a hip pointer, and if you've ever had one, you know how painful they can be. I've had one. Oh, you're right. They are painful. You don't cough. You don't sneeze. It's a hitch, and you get along. All right, here's the situation, Don. Uh, 425 and counting the left to go in the game, third and five. Do you throw it, or do you still try to run it out? Well, I think it. Let me see here just a minute. <laughs> I throw, throw it to Casper. Casper has the first down. Pulls ahead. That's what I do. Out to the 46-yard line. Carries Gerald Small with him. You know, I, watch David come back here. I think if I had a Casper, I'd throw to him every down. He always seems to get open. If he's not, he fights. He fights for the ball so hard, he, he, he usually gets it. Look, how can he leave it that open? Uh, well, he had plenty of time. Uh, you saw Art Shell doing a heck of a job. He was working on a... Uh, Here's Doug working, Betters. working off the linebacker, shakes him, throws him off. Darryl Small hops on for the ride. Ball over the 45-yard line. Getting serious, guys. Casper has caught four for 57. He caught four against Denver last week. Staber is 12 for 22. Handoff. Mark Van Egan out of the right side. Gets a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight. Upended there by Steve Toll. They really don't need but about one more first down, and uh, particularly if they do it on the ground, that clock is still running. Yeah. 3.15, and as Don said, the clock continues to move. And, of course, in this situation, defensively, you're going to see most of the defensive people right up near the line of scrimmage. You're going to see a lot of blitzing, trying to strip the ball out. It's their only chance is to strip the ball out and get a fumble in here. Mm -hmm. Second down and eight. Ball at the 48-yard line. Van Egan now only needs six yards to become Oakland's number two all-time rusher. But the handoff is Jensen. Jensen has a big opening. Stops short of the first down at the 45-yard line. Yeah, that's going to be awfully tough right there. That's going to be awfully tough. Seconds ticking away. Let's see how that thing opened up, Brand. What did it do? Well, I don't know, but they did. They did. They blitzed. Oh, they got a good block on toll there. Well, Henry, Henry Lars. Henry yes, Lars knocked him down. That's a trouble. The blitz is usually very effective against the run. Good tackle. But if you ever split that blitz, you've got a pretty good gainer, which they did. Good block by Henry Lars. Ball is placed in position. The clock has started. We're ticking off the seconds. We're inside. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the game. Oakland, third down, about a foot for a first down. Everybody thinks they're run left. Say aye. 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 And the eyes have it. <laughs> first down is Mark Van Egan behind Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. And that is going to be very tough on Miami as seconds continue to tick off. I think that even really, you know, the fact that we can sit here and do that and everybody else can too is you have to give those guys, those blockers, even more credit because you know that that defense knows that's where they're coming to. Particularly Art Shell. He has not seen any action since the second preseason game. And he's in there tonight, just activated today. There is the two-minute warning. Mike Curran, right offensive tackle for the Miami Dolphins. He's had a long night. Two-minute warning. We'll be back. Oakland has a first and ten. 
And of course, Howard Cosell and our regular director, Chet Forty, are both in Baltimore. Well, there will be bringing you the first game of the World Series between Baltimore and Pittsburgh tomorrow night. Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith. Fran Tarkenton reporting the action for you. Two minutes remaining in the contest. Oakland has the football. This is the eighth play of their drive, working on the clock. And by the way, it's the Oakland's longest of the night. Handoff on first down as Jensen over the left side. Gets a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight. Rusty Chambers out there defensively. And we have a timeout called by Miami. And Jack Tatum, they reported a hip pointer. And he came off the field, but he appears to be all right. Andy, since this is my first time to work with you, I haven't had the privilege to hear you sing at this time of the game, and, and I think it's all the time for your song, and I'll hum. You know those words? I, I don't know them, I'll hum for you. <laughs> um, well, let's give them one more time. I mean, something well, could happen. It's, it's almost time. You have to be very delicate in a situation like that. Well, you're experiencing these matters, you know, and I'm not. Yeah, because I've never miscalled one, you see, Fran. There's a record in there. Frustrating night for Don Shula. The offense came to life. In the second half, a couple of misplays deep in Oakland territory Frank, I has think, been the major difference. I think in that first quarter, first quarter and a half when Miami was out there, it seemed like to me that they were confused. They didn't have something, uh, I don't know whether Oakland was doing something different defensively, but I felt they were really very tentative. And you're right, they just got off to such a slow start. Tried to make a good comeback here in the second half. I don't think either offense has much to be proud of tonight. Really, they uh, Miami moved the ball some in the second half, but they didn't get it across the goal line, and that's what they pay off on. And Larry is one who can be because Sunk has had some kind of night. I'm uh, just going to say he has put on quite a show. Second down and eight. The ball at the 41-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Getting the call is Derek Jensen. He pounds around the right side down to the 35-yard line. He bobbled the football. Let's see who has it. I swear to you, what I was just thinking, because when I saw him go down, he had that ball out in one hand, hanging up in the arm. I said, man, he's going to fumble like that. I felt the vibration. Did you I see knew, it? I knew you were thinking. I looked at that. I saw yeah. you thinking that. Isn't that amazing how yeah. strong those things are? It really is. And slow to get up is Norris Thomas. 125 and counting, Dandy. Just give me one more play. All right, Oakland coming up with the ball. Another first down. They can pretty well lock it up, and that would drop Miami, of course, back into a tie with New England. Oakland would enter the picture in the AFC's Western Division race. Third down, three. Jensen gets the call, and he gets the first down. Third down to the 31. First down, Oakland. The party is Inside over. one minute. We'd like to thank our spotter, Steve Pazika, our statistician, Mike Swanson. Thank Andy Sedaris, who joined us tonight in relief of Jeff Forty, who, as I mentioned before, is in Baltimore with Uncle Howard for the telecast of the World Series tomorrow night. Uncle Howard, what is that? Way to go, Sedaris. All right. Francis, it's been kind of fun. We'll see you, what, next week, Sunday in Sunday Dallas? Sunday night in Dallas for the Rams and the Cowboys, and I can't wait. That's going to be a good one. And the next night, we get your old boys up in New York City. Yes, we will. Jensen over the left side. We mentioned that Larry Zonka's night, 83 yards for him. Del Williams went 86 yards. And a timeout called by Miami, 18 seconds remaining in the game, and we'll be back in a moment. Ted Hendricks, who was responsible for one of Miami's three turnovers, and he rumbled in with a Bob Greasy interception for a touchdown. You wonder how he gets it with that thumb. I think that's what he's trying to point out. He's allowed to do that thing with no fingers. No oh, thumbs. Hello. Oh, oh, there it is. There are the, there are the three ducks. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> three what? <laughs> Can you say that again? For three good old boys. <laughs> 18 seconds on the clock. Miami, no timeouts. They yes, can't sir. stop it again. That'll be the football game. Oakland has dropped their record to three and three. Denver in their division, Kansas City and San Diego all four and two. Miami, they drop back into a tie with the New England Patriots in the Eastern Division of the AFC. And Don Shula, he'll always be there. And he'll be there at the end of the year. Taking the long stroll, the one that he does not like on the losing end of the football game. We'll be back. Certainly was not a Pittsburgh-Cleveland game where they piled up over 900 yards of offense yesterday. These two teams tonight, both struggling, both having their problems. In any event, Miami loses. They fall back to a tie with New England in the AFC's Eastern Division, while the Oakland Raiders are back in the thick of it again in the Western Division of the AFC. 
We'll see Miami and New England later, and we'll also see San Diego and Oakland. All right, once again, the final score, Oakland 13, Miami 3. Join us next Sunday for a special edition of ABC's NFL. Thank you for joining us on another edition of Raider Reaction, Black Friday. Until next time, I'm out. Peace, love. Oh, oh, oh. But wait, tomorrow night, a brand new show hosted by yours truly. Same Raider time, same Raider channel. Don't miss this shit. You don't want to miss this. Until then, I'm out. Peace, love. Raider Nation. The 1979 World Series. It'll begin tomorrow night at 8 Eastern Time. The Pittsburgh Pirates versus the Baltimore Orioles from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. This is Frank Gifford along with Don Meredith and Fran Tarkenton saying so long from Oakland, California. Our blimp has been provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Trap little.